the other goes home a loser. Because in boxing, unlike most sports, gravity works down. We gonna roll, so homie, you gotta mean shit me. me. Hey, Listen to Derek me. Thackeray, like don't shit life, on homie, no one. Roll, but, uh, I do like to piss on in. my seat. We got some and uh, I like my seat, too. Not really on it, so stay out of the way. <laughs> The five game, that ain't rigged, is it? Of course not. Hey, how could anything professional be fake? <laughs> hey, there's too much money at stake for one thing. I mean, Christy McIntyre, let's go to the phones. Hi, Christy, hey, my man. wife, and I love your show. It really helps. Oh, thanks. Do you want to tell us about it? Uh, no. Okay. Jenny on the line from Santa Maria. Hi, Jenny. How's your heart? Broken. Like my arm and two of my ribs. What happened? I married my childhood sweetheart, but it all went wrong. He's become a drunk, and he has a substance problem, too. And now he beats me every day. Stay with him, honey. After all, you're only lonely when you're alone. But he keeps threatening to kill me. Jenny, do you know the meaning of the phrase homewrecker? No. What about selfish bitch? I want to bring people together, not break them apart. Who's on the phone? It's a big, lonely state out there. Careful, I'm Mary. I'm watching you right now in the shower. Notice how many lonely hearts are lunatics? You wonder why, or perhaps not. Brian from Las Venturas. Hey, dude. My name's Brian. I'm from Las Venturas. Don't want to talk about my heart. Why do men just repeat back what you say and never listen? Are you brain dead, Brian? Oh, actually, it's ironic that you say that. It's because my wife's been brain dead for years now. Oh, Thanks for the so sorry. I seemed all insensitive for a second there, possibly ruining my career. Would it help if I slept with you? <laughs> Probably not, dude, though. She wouldn't even notice me. I get away with it all the time now. Even after I did it with her sister. Actually, our relationship is better than ever. The passion is amazing. It's worth I'm a new person each time. If she was back to the way she was before the accident, wow, I put her in a coma myself. I mean, it's fantastic. That's very informative. You know, last night, I wondered what it would be like to be brain dead. Then I watched my five uncles. I had to live in that house. Remember, a heart to men. Divorce lasts forever. Unless he makes you a widow. Hello? Yeah, hello, Lonely Hearts. Uh, I was just calling up there because I was listening and I figured out, you know, that Yo, I dude. can help out some of y'all clients. You know, this is none other than Jesse, the proprietor of the Pleasure Domes Club. If anybody is out there lonely, first of all, with all the people on this planet walking around, there's no reason for anybody to be lonely. You understand? That's why I'm in the business of keeping people with company. You know what I'm saying? People who got low self-esteem, they need to pick me up. They need to come down to the Pleasure Dome, hang out. You won't be lonely from the moment you walk in the door, because somebody's going to grab your hand, and it's going to be all about to get down from there. Good grief! That's not the way Lonely Hearts works at all! Is anyone here suffering? I want pain, misery, desolation, all the important things. Hi, this is Tamara. I'm a stalker. Oh, that's really beautiful. Tell everyone about it. My man, well, I call him that, even though he's broken off all contact and is married to someone else. I killed the gazelle and sent his heart to him in an envelope. He liked it so much, told the police and even the newspapers. Then I burnt down his place of business, and now I have a special surprise for him. Ah, oh, you have a great week. Isn't that really beautiful? That's all we have time for. If your heart is lonely, listen to other losers, and you won't be lonely anymore. You'll want to spend the rest of your life in isolation, away from people, which is progress after all. Until next time. I hope you enjoyed Lonely Hearts. It's always fun to laugh at other people's misery, isn't it? If you love to hear liberals whine and conservatives lecture, then stay tuned for I Say You Say. The future of America. You love to hear liberals whine and conservatives lecture, then stay tuned for I Say You Say. The future of America. Threatened again. This time we mean it. I'm Dr. Phillips. And I'm also Dr. Phillips. Today on the show, do cave paintings in museums make us violent? The anti-beef movement. Both Hitler and Mussolini were vegetarian. And we take on the highly charged debate about test tube babies and actually talk to one. I have flashbacks. I can go into hysterics in science class. Do you know what it's like growing up in a beaker? That's all today on I Say, You Say. We share last names, but that's about it. I'm Peyton, that's my wife Mary, and this is I Say, You Say, where left is right, and right is wrong. Or where east meets west, and the west always wins. 
That wall came down, darling. Yes, unfortunately it did. I, I don't know if you saw today's news, so who is in the right in this great dialectical disaster? Is it, as I think, a case of share and share like? Love your fellow man and all wear matching jumpsuits while working on a collective hydroponic farm growing potatoes? Or kill or be killed, crush the weak, and starve the poor, as my wonderful wife thinks. You decide, or let us decide for you. Give us a call and let my wife, a professor in social Darwinism, or me, a lecturer in pointless anthropology, work things out. That's the problem with liberals. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go. Right, gotcha. Yes, good point. But remember, our founding fathers grew tobacco, relaxed them between stressful stints of genocide and witch burning. And you're so against raising taxes, smokers pay more taxes than anyone. My grandfather smoked his whole life. He lived until he was 32. So what I'm saying is, why can't we encourage more smoking and use the money to pay for better health care and some cultural programs, bringing expressive dance and sun worship back to the inner cities? Worrying about the inner city has ruined your academic career. And this woolly thinking is going to ruin your chances of getting anywhere with me tonight. Promise? The thing is, smoking is good because it lets people make a lot of money, but so is selectively culling the population. So what I'm proposing is a change in the proposition. Let people smoke, but make cigarettes much cheaper and force everyone to smoke. That way we weed out the weak, make a lot of money in tax, and keep our national heritage intact. Line two, you're on I Say, You Say. Ha! Ah, I listen every time to your show. It's really made me think about the world a whole new way. I moved out of the city because it sucks. Now I live in a compound surrounded by barbed wire and shoot and kill anyone I don't recognize on my land. Just want to say thank you. That's some quality broadcasting. Yeah, uh, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better about myself. Have you got a question? Yeah, I got corpses from 15 illegal immigrants in my yard. I killed them all myself with my bare hands. Could I get a tax break for all this unpaid work? Good question. I would certainly hope so. Ask your accountant if you can register them as dependents. Then hide most of your net worth offshore in a complex money laundering system designed to support the drugs trade. Then you can pay virtually no taxes and complain about how awful you think the whole country is, knowing you're doing as little as possible to help. Cool, thanks. That's good advice. I'm appalled at you, Mary Phillips. Ugh, why? Because that man has a garden full of corpses and you're talking about money laundering. Yes, it's a great idea opportunity for some profit-centric thinking. You missed a wonderful opportunity to talk about recycling and organ donation. Oh, God, give me strength. I married a full ah. McHistory or mm -hmm. cross-cultural underwear or something, and I was very young. Very foolish. Mm -hmm. Now I see you for what you are. And what's that exactly? An intellectual cesspit. A middle class disaster. A guilt trip wrapped in neuroses and completely unable to function in this society. No wonder I've begun to sleep around. And on that note, we have to go visit our marriage therapist. There was a conniving bitch and won't write me any more prescriptions for painkillers. Remember, when the left wing and the right wing come together, <laughs> the country can really get going. Straight off a cliff. We'll see you next time. These guys got too much to lose. I mean, why is a guy going to take a dive for a few extra million when he could earn that over a number of years getting his brain turned to pulp? Be serious for a minute. The clock is counting down again. It's time for Derek to head to the locker room and celebrate in the shower. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bring a cooler full of beers and get ready to riot. This has been the tight end zone. <laughs> I'm wearing a black dress on. And this is WCTR, proving that radio is better than TV. That's the show men with large guts love. Deal with your ignorance in one minute flat. Complex issues in 60 seconds. WCTR. Do you have any idea what I'm doing up here? Coming up next, the most mind numbing thing since the lobotomy Entertaining America. Spence, while I'm looking down at this you. This week on Entertaining America. Have you seen a real dinosaur? Of course you haven't. And you never will. Fact. That's because they never existed. And science, science is a lie. I mean, have you actually ever seen a sperm? We've all tried. All you have to do is read and understand the Epsilon Tract, and the secrets of the universe will be open to you. This is a life-altering experience. All your mortal fears will be at ease. The Epsilon Program. This time, God, it's personal. Next. Support for The Wild Traveler is brought to you by the Ultimate Disc in the Dark Association of America, who encourages you to get out and play hard. Hello, I'm James Bedista, World Traveler, and this is The Wild Traveler. 
We're discussing the world and all of its many pleasures. Let me put it like this. Why have a hot dog from an uncaring vendor by the bathroom when you can attend a beer-guzzling marathon in Germany with a normal young boy? The world possibilities. But war is folly, and we can only unite by visiting these epochs of culture, where a man can be himself, smoke cigarettes, dress in gladiator clothing if he likes. We mustn't force our way and culture upon other peoples. Rather, breathe it in, become part of it. Maybe Hemingway was right about love. Maybe Ford was. We're all fighting inside to let a wild creature mate in the rain. I travel, therefore I am. This is a show that embraces culture from around the world. Let's take our first caller. Hello? Yeah, I totally agree with you about Australia. And you're right, the moon is shit. Also, I thinking of visiting... Oh, yes, fantastic forms of recreation to be had in Colombia. It's a blizzard of excitement. And cheap? The rails are great! And long. <laughs> Bolivia's not bad either. Or Peru. You'll be surprised to find out how the party never stops. How's the food? Well, a lighter is the most you need to cook up food. But there's scarcely time to eat, my boy. You'll meet fascinating people, feel so comfortable, you'll rip your clothes off and howl! Today's next caller. Yeah, hi. My name's Geraldine, calling from Casa City. This is such a great country. Why would you go anywhere else? It's unpatriotic to travel. I mean, I got war, famine, depression, and pollution right here. We had in the Far East. Next caller, you're on the Wild Traveler. Hey, I've been listening to you go on and on about travel. Do you know how expensive it is to fly to Asia? Russia saw the light. They're all coming here to set up crime families and run numbers. South America, everyone went extinct there. They have less culture there than the content of my toilet bowl. Rainforest, Schmain Forest. And Mexico, if I wanted to be that close to my ancient ancestors, I'd be banging my mother-in-law instead of my wife's best friend. Look, you can fight like beasts or agree to disagree. I'm sure the summit of your aspirations in life is a cheerleader with fake guns, but some of us think a little more exotically than this. Next caller, vamos, buenos dias and noches. If you don't smile, I won't keep honor. Sorry, got lost for a second. Speak. Hey, I love this show. I'm a huge fan. I visit all the places you recommended, and in a lot of them, they're still talking about you. I even saw posters of you in the customs booth at the airport in the Philippines. You rock! And no doubt, I love Manila. I had a great time. Did that show you did last week? What was the name of that spiritual center in Bangkok? The Wild Dragon's Happy Ending. Very spiritual. You will find in a piece. Awesome. I can't wait. Thanks, man. Yes, we all love to travel. Get away from it all. Get away from the people with computers. Entertaining in America. Richard Goblin. One man's triumphant return to cock. The Sherman on Tuplets. A Venturist man says he slept with them all. Plus, noise, speed, danger, cursing, and patriotism finally come together this weekend at the All-America Drunk Driving Cup. Hi from Vinewood, you're on Entertaining America with me, Billy Dexter, bringing you everything that is important in culture and entertainment, if there is a difference between the two, from the heart of entertainment in America, Vinewood San Andreas. You with me, the Dex. Wanted to call the show Stack the Dex, but not yet. Kiflum. Anyway, great. Big show for you this week. Controversy, they'll be giving me a Pulitzer. Anyway, today, we've got some great guests. First up, we speak to troubled action hero Jack Howitzer. Then we have a live phone link up with a very special guest, Modern Day Lazarus, a man back from the grave now making it as an extra in major motion pictures. Then, I will explain the secrets of the universe to everyone. But first up, stack the decks in which I, Billy Dexter, meet the entertainers in the news. Kiflum. Keep them out there. Jack Howitzer, once the biggest star in America, but the last three years have been unkind. People describe him as a dinosaur, an action hero relic from the 80s, a muscle-bound Neanderthal, and my favorite, the most stupid gorilla in the jungle. Jack, welcome to the show. Kiflum. <laughs> Good to be here, Dex. Pleasure. So your movies Exploder and Annihilator got America through some tough times, and I was also a huge fan of, of Zero Seconds to Death Thank Time. Thank you, Day. thank you. But many say your new film has gone too far. No, this is a romantic comedy with drama. It's got action. It's got a heart. That's what's most important, I think. Okay, well, let's take a listen. Profession. What? Oh, time for me to head south again. I'm James Bedeeston, and this has been The Wild Traveler. 
This is WCTR, committed to bringing you shows like The Wild Traveler, the show that takes you around the world and abandons you at the airport. Up next on WCTR, it's the man coaches hate. It's Derek Thackeray. Tight End Zone, brought to you by Eris Pump Up Shoes, because women love a winner, and winners wear shoes. Should we uh, start with the national anthem? Uh, yeah, yeah, screw it. Yeah, I got, I got too drunk last night. Just uh, play the opening music. Plus one, plus two. Uh, welcome back to the Tight End Zone. Now it's time for something really important. Fat men talking about games they don't really understand, played by people they don't know. I'm your host, Derek Thackeray. What a crazy year it's been. Let's recap. Drug scandals involving preschool soccer moms. Ha <laughs> ha, woo! And the national finals, rich and popular people are fighting it out. Pay attention, the country is in mourning. Hey, man! And most importantly, sports wear. We talked to a fitness expert about the crucial role of endorsed clothing. And who could forget, we visit the greatest moments. Here he comes. He's in the shadows. There he is. Is he going to make it? Yes, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just witnessed is the biggest moment in world history. Who cares about a declaration of independence or discovery of penicillin? You have just seen one man score a point. When the rest of the world discovers TV, they'll be able to see this. Wow, isn't that amazing? He did what he was paid to do. We love sports more than you. Love it or loathe it, let's talk about it. Stay in the tight and... Let's go to the phones. Yeah, the Wolves! Hey, Derek, my name's Jason, and I'm a Wolves fan. First time caller. I don't vote, I can't be bothered. But I will kick your ass if you disrespect my sports team. <laughs> okay, the Wolves, that's team playing sports as if they cared. Yeah, the Wolves! I don't care who's sleeping with who on the team. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy, okay. Hey, let's take another call. Who's on the phone? Hello, caller, you're on with the tight end of radio. Hey, I'm a big what? Olympics fan. Everything Always now. have been, since day one. Been to every one. Me too. I love the games, especially the luge. <laughs> I'm married, so uh, sliding down an icy tunnel of doom at high speed makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I know about frigid action myself. I mean, they gotta be kidding me. Since when has running been an Olympic Are sport? Running ain't a sport. Don't make me puke. Anyone can run. My ex-wife made me an athlete. I ran my... Move in! Come and killing communists. And uh, I had a great childhood, really great, even if my uncle did come into my room that late at night. Anyway, who's on the line? We got a Caledonian fan on the line. Tough times, huh? Hey, uh, your whole life revolving around rich men playing poorly. Man, I totally identify with shallow heroes who I don't know personally. God, I love a dude with a big pituitary gland. I love the Callies, man, but you know, this year, I'm telling you, they're going to need to score some points and get some yardage and win the game. Yeah, if they don't win, men will be beating their wives with good reason. Hey, they got to start playing to win, trying to score some on the other team. Hey, I wish I had a wife so she could beat me. <laughs> Here's what I say, man. If you want to be number one, you got to go for first Play. I know, I know. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, it's great stating the obvious, but once you get paid for it, things get really complicated. Man, I was at their training camp this spring, and the mood in the locker room, dude, guys were getting changed, man. I mean, they were really getting scared. Shoes were going on, feet, shirts were going on, the shirt part of their body, serious faces on them, and you could tell that they were going to play this game. Bottom line is, if they don't score more points than the other team, they can't win! Yeah. Alright, let's roll that. He was a man 